This is a late night video. I'm running a bit behind today and you'll see why in a second. However, I also want to jump in and correct a few things and answer a few questions regarding the hyperhydro form. Because the one certain thing is that Project Hydro is definitely getting some attention. But first, let me talk about last week's poll in the community tab. The one about channel memberships because I think there's some confusion about exactly what a YouTube channel membership actually is. Let me tell you what it is not. It doesn't mean that you would have to pay for the content that you love or that you're going to get less of it. It's simply a way for creators, people like me, to be able to offer additional content to those that want more. Things like behind the scenes footage, sneak peeks, or even reviews on smaller products like components. That being said, and whether there's confusion or there isn't, I respect the results of your voting. And that's why I'm going to go about this in a different way and in a free way with an additional channel to cover smaller reviews and the additional content. This way people that like Kev Central the way it is can be happy and people that want more content can sign up for the new channel and get the additional content on Kev Reviews. So for those of you that want more content, well today I'm announcing Kev Reviews and you should see a card sliding in or you can look down in the description for a link. You can see the first review on Kev Reviews today. It's already uploaded and it's an affordable action cam. So after this video, head over and give that review a look. And if you like what you see, you might want to subscribe because there's going to be more content coming in the future. And now back to the hydroform. First, this is for the people that ask what size shock I use. This is a 190 millimeter with 50 millimeters of travel. Now put a notation on that travel because I've seen people say that 39 millimeters is the max travel that this pivot rocker can support. Well, my shock has slightly less than 50. It's actually 47 millimeters of usable travel, but it works. Let's talk about the factory shock for a second. I looked it up. I couldn't find anything for this particular shock, or at least anything that was over 150 millimeters. And this one is about 190. It comes in at about 186 exactly eye to eye. But I wanted to know the full travel of this shock took it apart and I measured the max available travel and you would never get all of this because of the spring but the max available travel from top to bottom is 41 millimeters so 41 millimeter theoretical max shock movement on that factory shock now that's a good segue into a contact that I had via my website someone told me that they measured the pivot rocker and it couldn't move more than 35 millimeters without hitting the seat tube. Unless they got a deformed pivot rocker, which technically I guess is possible, that doesn't really make sense, and it's certainly not in my case. Because as you can see, with my roughly 47 millimeters of travel, I have no seat tube strikes, and I've even let all the air out of my shock and bounced up and down on the saddle. Next, let's talk about the nylon bushings, or well, the plastic bushings. This really isn't a big issue. You can search online and find companies that make nylon bushings for bikes that normally come with metal bushings and you can replace them with the nylon. Will these wear? Well, yes, that's one of the reasons for bushings. That's what they're for. My snapper lawnmower has bushings, nylon bushings, on all the heavy wear joints and it's over nine years old with lots of abuse and they're still fine. The bushings you see here so far have over six hours of riding time and they're still fine. Just in case, I've purchased more because this is a wear part. If only I could find where I put them. Let me also address the people that were concerned that I was running these bars without end caps. I appreciate the concern, but rest easy. I have more on the way, but I just couldn't wait. I had to ride the bike. And finally, let's talk about wheels. This is the 27.5 wheel set with the 3 inch tires. Now, I purchased these for another bike. These ended up on the Hydro really is lucky chance, which is why I said serendipity. And I think these set the bike off. They're really a statement, they handle great, and they fit the factory fork oddly well. But remember, I didn't plan this build out with these wheels being on this bike, which is why I'm going to do an early reveal. This is the fork that I bought to use on this bike. Now, this fork was already en route when I decided to try out these plus size wheels. This is a standard size 29er air fork and it should be a great fork. And I'm revealing it now because someone asked me in the comments what fork I was using and I told them. And then they mentioned that they had bought one. Congrats on that, but let me show you something first. Now I have no idea if anyone is planning on using this fork with plus size wheels, but if so, just know that clearances are tight. 
It's a much tighter clearance than the factory fork, but for me it's enough. I mean, I've ran even tighter. But I know people that would have a problem with this spacing, so keep this in mind if you plan on buying an Apixon and running it with plus-sized wheels. As soon as the new group set arrives, and I can't wait, I can get stage 2 complete and get this bike out on the trails and really have some fun with it. But I hope this info and this video have helped you if you have any questions or concerns, maybe answered some of those. And now, those of you that are left can head over to Kev Reviews and give that channel a peek and even subscribe if you want more content. Should be a link popping up now, if not, there's one in the description. Thanks for watching this late arriving video and have a great day, or evening.